Okay, uh, welcome to uh, this week's uh, Astrophysics Colloquium. Um, it's our pleasure to have Professor Mala Dash from Shaha Institute of Nuclear Physics as our speaker today. Professor Dash did her PhD from Bose Institute in Calcutta. And then she was a postdoc at BCC in Kolkata, as well as uh, Hokkaido University in Japan. And then uh, she also worked on the Picasso collaboration for dark matter direct search um, at, uh, as part of SINP, as well as University of Montreal. And then she uh, uh, became a faculty member at SINP uh, from 2010, where she has been since then. And, uh, and she will talk about the dark matter direct search uh, project where SINP is involved, which is deep inside a mine in, in Harkhand. Uh, so welcome, Professor Dash. This, so this is the laser. Get a The bottom one is the laser. The slide okay. you can use probably. Okay. okay, so this my guy. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you for the introduction and. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. I also thank Ritavan Chatterjee for inviting me here. Uh, this is the first time I came to Presidency University. I came here before when I was a student in Calcutta University. Uh, That's a long time. So today I will be mainly talking about uh, the initiative of dark matter direct search at uh, J. Vessel in, uh, in India. Okay, so uh, I will uh, mainly first I will I will start with uh, introduction, and that introduction will be a bit longer. Uh, I will I'll talk about mainly uh, today. I will be speaking about the experiments, the how these like, kind of experiments are done. 
So I will give a very short introduction on what is dark matter is, and then I will talk about how this type of experiments are done, what are the challenges that we have to face, and how do we overcome all those challenges to get the dark matter signal from there. And then I will talk about, uh, about the laboratory in India and the science program at JUSL. Then initiate then the dark matter search experiment that uh, what is going on there and of course the possible future directions. The word maybe you, you may know uh, the word that was first came from Fritz Jewiski in 1937 where he has measured uh, the kinetic energies of uh, several galaxies of the coma clusters and he, he finds that the uh, uh, velocities are much larger than what is expected. And from there, uh, it, the, it came the problem of uh, missing mass problem, the hidden mass problem uh, that, that arises. And that becomes a very a big problem in uh, modern cosmology and astrophysics. That is an interesting uh, subject of research today. So uh, now what is dark matter? If we see the mass energy budget of the universe, it shows that about 5%, 4.9% is only the visible matter. 26.8% is dark matter and 68.3% is the dark energy. So what is this dark matter is? It, it has no electromagnetic interaction with ordinary matter and it can be inferred through its gravitational interactions only. Now, there are several evidences of Dark existence of dark matter. Uh, one of the most uh, observational evidences, one of the most uh, promising observational evidences uh, is a rotation curve of the galaxy. Now, um, if you see this, uh, this picture here, okay. So um, here, if, if, if we see, if, if we measure the, uh, the rotational speed of the galaxy from the center of the galaxy, now what it should be, it should be, it should be first, it should lean, it should increase linearly with the distance, and then it should decrease as, as one over root over r. But what is observed is this curve that it almost flat uh, as we go far away from the center of the galaxy. So this means that the stars at the outer edges of the galaxies, they are, they are moving very fast. So to keep in place, we need to have a huge mass in it. And from there, uh, it shows that there must, there must exist a huge hidden mass in the universe. There are other evidences also, like as uh, anisotropy in the cosmic microwave background radiations. And also, um, the, if we see the images of the galaxy clusters, that shows that the center of mass is not at the same location as the center of the light signals. There are other evidences also. Now. Uh, among there are several dark matter candidates that have been proposed by the theoreticians uh, different times, like um, like heavy, heavy, heavy mass neutrinos, WIMPs, metros, axions, like that. And most favored candidates are the WIMPs, the weakly interacting massive particles. I'm not going much details on, on those parts because I'm interested in something else. So uh, now what are the different possible ways that we can detect dark matter? Now, here I have listed one, two, three. So the first one, uh, as I have listed here, is it is a searching at the Large Hadron Collider. There, uh, if you see, the, if you know the particle that is coming and that is outgoing channel and incoming channel, and if we measure the uh, missing particle, if it is there, if there, from the conservation of momentum, they can uh, they can say that okay, there is existence of dark matter there. They can create artificially. Indirect detection, indirect detection means it is uh, in the center of a massive object. It may be possible that wimp, wimp, it may annihilate and they produce some other particles like neutrinos. So those neutrinos that can be high, very high energy neutrinos, those can be detected by some other experiments, neutrino-based neutrino experiments. And the other one is the direct detection. So direct detection is here, it is, it is thought that the that the wimp may interact occasionally with the material of the uh, in, uh, that is stationed in the earth surface in the earth so it can interact there how it will interact it, it can interact with the nucleus of the of the material 
and it will give uh, an energy to the nucleus, give a king to the nucleus, that nucleus will deposit energy in the media, and that energy deposition will be detected in different ways. Okay, that is the uh, direct detection. So we're interested in direct detection methods. And there are uh, uh, large, not large, maybe 20, about 20 or more uh, number of experiments that are uh, worldwide that is going on and uh, in different underground laboratories. Now, why these underground laboratories? That I will also come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here you see the uh, some of the experiments here, like this is Sudan, underground lab, Snow Lab, then Grand Sasso and others. In Snow Lab, there we have several experiments. Grand Sasso also, there are some uh, few experiments are there and other, other places. So of course it is not the all the experiments are not there. So don't mind if you don't see your favorite experiments here. Now uh, that beams that I'm talking about, uh, this mass range, it's I say is a few GeV to few TeV, but uh, MeV scale of beams are now are also covered. And the cross section is very weak, so very less than very pico pico one cross section. Now how to then how we detect these beams because the cross section is very very low. So mainly by the elastic scattering of the detector nuclei. So, and what will measure? The, the recoil nuclei, that recoil nuclear energy spectra, recoil energy spectra will basically measure in the experiments. So this is the recoil energy spectra DNDR and depends on this velocity and speed, density, mass, cross-section. Now uh, here you see this, you can have density that yeah, or, or that the estimation of density and, and speed, but the mass and cross section that is unknown. And this is that we can obtain from the experiments. So what is done in experiment, the, this, this count rate, this uh, recall spectra, these are expressed in terms of mass and cross section. And if we get a signal, then we get like this, this is called a contour. But if we don't get any signal, that is also a result. Then we plot it like this. What we say it is called exclusion plot. This means that all the reason above this place are excluded, that there is no dark matter signal. It may be in some other place. Now, if an experiment is showing a result like this, then if I want to go like in this way, means I want to, I want to lower the energy, I want to go down low energy, I want to explore then I have to lower the energy threshold of the, of the detector, or I have to use a low mass target of material. And if I want to go down, means I want to decrease the cross section, then I have to increase the exposure, means mass of the target nuclear, and also the time of the experiments. So, um, so um, mainly the experiments, these are the two terms, that these are the terms that we, we look for the uh, count rate, the nuclear recall energy spectra, and from there we infer the results in, the, in terms of mass and cross section. Now, what is the challenge then? The challenge is that because the interaction cross section is very low, so I will get the event rate, means what we'll see in the detector, the count rate will be very low. So event rate is very low. And the recoil energy is also very small, that the energy the uh, wind will give to the nucleus, that energy is very small energy, so it's less than 100 keV. That also we can calculate from the kinematics. But background is very large. What is background? Everything is background, what is there outside, okay? So, and where's the origin of this background? The, it can be cosmic rays background, it can be radioactive background. So cosmic rays to reduce the cosmic ray backgrounds, this type of experiments are generally placed in underground site. Now, but still in the underground also, there may be radioactive background. Where they are coming from, they may be intrinsic. Intrinsic means it may come from the detector itself. The detector that I am using, the material of the detector, it may be not that much of pure, so from the impurity. Or external background, it may come from the underground, from the rock, from the outside background, it may come from the external background. So you, you have to choose the detector material in such a way that it has a very low intrinsic background, it means it's, it should be very pure. And it, it, if it has some capacity that it can reject some external background, it doesn't see some background, that is also very good quality. And also we have to make a very large size detector because the cross section is very low. 
So these properties it should have. So this means we have to make a very large detector, size detector, but it should be background filled. So this is the technical challenge. It's very challenging experiments. These are different uh, direct detection experiments. It is mainly, it is a beam, it's, if it counts, then it will deposit energy by the recoil nuclei. So that energy deposition, it can, be, it can be utilized in a scintillator as a heat or it can be ionization. So uh, these are different experiments that, that they use as this kind of crystals, sodium iodide, sodium iodide crystals. Some of the experiments, they use heat and also um, ionization, like some external liquid uh, xenon experiments, very famous experiments, LG experiments, these are experiments. They use as, um, they use as the uh, gas as a target. Some experiments also use as, uh, liquid, superheated liquid as a detector material here with mainly the acoustic signal, or this is also heat in terms of heat. So that heat converts to acoustic signal and that they uh, detect by this, this type of experiment. So we will focus our, uh, our work on this type of detection. There are uh, some number of experiments that uses superheated liquid technique as a detecting uh, material. This is a simple experiment in LSBB in France. Picasso experiment, in Snow Lab in Canada. A poop experiment that is, was uh, as, uh, beginning it was in Fermi Lab, then it came to Snow Lab. And then these two experiments, they merge and form PICO experiments. So these experiments, PICO also uses uh, superheated liquid. Moskev, another experiment that also uses a superheated liquid. But they are in different forms. Some uses droplet detector, some uses bubble chamber, and this is a, some geyser type instead of condensation type of chamber that also I will explain. So uh, here I will mainly I will explain, I will speak a little bit about simple and PICO experiments because I would like to explain how this experiment basically done and how the results are analyzed. So uh, let me talk about a little bit about the simple experiment at LSBB. This is this experiment is in a south, southeast of France, and this is inside a mountain. So uh, and uh, here uh, there is a there is a tunnel uh, from this side. You can enter and you can go as you go down. Go up. yeah, as you go there, then uh, your height uh, above your uh, head it increases, and it is about five. 500 meter deep underground. So, um, and there, uh, this is the lab. So as you enter and then enter the tunnel, there, uh, this way you have to go there using this type of uh, car, military car, and uh, at different halls, uh, you have to go about uh, 3.2 kilometer and there, uh, uh, there are the experimental halls. Now, the main thing is what is the radiation background there? And two main important thing, one is neutron and another is, uh, another is uh, muons. So the neutron background at this position is here, this is here, uh, the order of this, then to the minus five neutrons per centimeter second, and muons, cosmic muons backgrounds is of the order of like this. So uh, this is very much similar with our JVSL uh, depth. So this is the um, detectors that are sitting, droplet detectors that are sitting inside a water, water bath. This is water, actually you can see here that there is a water. And th then everything is surrounded by a uh, vibration absorber uh, shielding. Okay. And this is another experiment that is PICO experiment. And PICO experiment is a simple experiment that was, uh, that was started much early, but it stopped in uh, 2017. And that time they gave a very world uh, well, uh, well, uh, different results. And um, PICO experiment is, uh, it, it is in Snow Lab in Canada and it is at six countries there. And uh, about 11 uh, uh, institutions uh, involved together about 60, 55 to 60 people, but it is mainly dominated by uh, students and postdocs. So it is different like, uh, like simple. It is a mine, so you have to go down, uh, just vertical down, vertical down by two kilometers. And then again, you have to walk 1.8 kilometer and there are the uh, holes, experimental holes. So this shows you the muon flux. That is very important because we want to reduce the muon flux. 
So uh, here it is a small lab, so it's muon plus, it's very low here. Now it was, Smolens was the most deepest uh, facility of underground facility, but now it is Jinping in China that came and that is now the most uh, uh, deepest underground facility, but Smolens is the most under clean, uh, ultra clean research facility. So what is the size of the actual detector? This detector? Okay, I will show you the size. But now it is uh, 60 liter. So uh, this is the Keton mine uh, where the uh, in this mine underground, where you should go underground and then you walk and come before you enter the lab. You have to wash everything. You have to wash everything. You have to clean yourself also. And then you go come to the lab uh, where uh, this is the Picasso detector. From outside, it, it is just seen as a box. But inside, uh, there are 32 detectors and uh, each of, uh, of uh, uh, 3.2 liters detectors and they're surrounded by water shielding. So here I showed you the evolution of the detector. And when it has started, Picasso detector, when it was started beginning, it was a 10 ml detector, it is like this detector. And this was available, this was actually, it is actually commercially available neutron dosimeter that is used for the uh, neutron dose measurement. You just use in, in your chest and you go to do your radiation measurement work. So that was taken and with one sensor. So this is there, with this, the first test was done. And then this was made by, by, the, by this company, this is Bubble Technology Industry Company, they make this, it is one liter detector with two sensors. And third generation, this was made by in, in University of Montreal, but this is a totally a self-fabricated, very different from this, because a background was reduced a lot here. And this is a 4.5 liter detector, and each detector, there are nine sensors. So there are 32 detectors, means 32 into nine sensors in there. So these are all droplet detectors. Then it changed to, then came Pico, and then it changed to bubble chamber. So you have all the bulk liquid, it is a separated liquid, and all these sensors, seven sensors uh, there. And then it is uh, Pico 60, finally. And what did, did, there, there is three sensors, there are seven sensors. So this evolution, I, I say that this is 97 to 19, it's a long time. And during this time, it was I, in our world, it's say dirty because it, it, it has many lots of background. And here, this is zero background detector. It's very large, but inside there is no contamination, totally zero background detector. So this is a Pico 60 uh, as it looks. And uh, this is inside. And there is a water shielding from outside. So you cannot see the de detector, but water shielding is large, huge. So it becomes so huge. And next, it is coming to go, uh, 500. So I will not explain this because I will explain it later. But uh, here it is, uh, they are projected. I already explained what is exclusion plot. So this is expected exclusion plot for uh, Vico 500. Vico 500 will be here somewhere. So in, in this region, it will be minus 42, uh, 43 cross sections. They, uh, where it is possible to exclude by this. Now, as you have seen that detecting beams mean basically fighting with the backgrounds. So if we, it scatters, you will get one event. If you take 100 kg detector and if you wait 100 days, you may get one, one event. But what is the background? For background, it is 10 to the power minus six to seven events. You, you, can, you can get one kg detector in one day. So you see that how difficult it is to search uh, this uh, waves. Okay, now be, uh, before I, I go to the actual experiments, you see the, the working principle, let me say a little bit, the working principle of this detector, separated right, liquid detector, because it's a superheated state, liquid state. So to evolve from liquid state to the vapor state, you have to deposit some energy, minimum energy. And that minimum energy is given by this expression that comes from Gibbs free energy. And uh, now, by the, if some particle comes, this 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 is the droplets. So if particles comes, it interacts with the nucleus, whatever it will be, uh, will be recall, and the nucleus will deposit energy. Now, if this energy deposition along the track is greater than this, uh, I mean, threshold energy, then vapor bubbles are formed. 
And once this vapor bubble, it reaches the size of the critical radius, it grows and forms a visible bubble like this. Now, during this process, during this transition, acoustic signal is released. And that signal is you can you can detect by acoustic sensors, maybe condenser microphone, maybe a piezoelectric transducer. There is a typical signal from uh, one such of bubble bursting, but bubble nucleation, it is said. And these are the droplets in an in a gel matrix. So uh, uh, next is well, how the detector it responds to different types of particles. Uh, it's called a calibration. So first we have to do the calibration. So it shows that this is the okay. Here we have seen that this minimum energy depends on temperature and also in pressure. So if we increase the temperature. Basically, its threshold energy decreases. So this is a temperature, operating temperature, and this is the threshold energy decreases. So basically, high temperature, it becomes sensitive to gamma rays or low energy relations. So here, and uh, and then comparatively low temperature, it becomes sensitive to beams, expected, right? this is the expected signal from, uh, say, 50 GVC square beams. This one is from neutrons, and these two are from alpha particles response so if uh, if we use our uh, detector at by this temperature say 45 my, my, around 50 degree it is not sensitive to gamma rays so we can get rid of gamma rays now neutrons by going underground using shielding you can you can reduce the neutron and alpha particles where they are coming from they are basically coming from the detector material from the uh, from the intrinsic background of the detector so we have to make the pure we have to purify the detector, or if if still it is there, then what we have to do, we have to make some discrimination method by doing the analysis. In the analysis process, we have to make some discrimination. Now, let me show you how to treat the such a uh, signal, because it is just an acoustic signal of a damped oscillation. So first, we, we pass it with uh, some high pass filter to get rid of some electronic noise if it is there. Then take the amplitude, uh, take the sum of the square of the amplitudes. So it let and that 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 variable, we construct a variable that depends on the on 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 this uh, whole area. So it basically it, it 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 shows you the energy that is released during the bubble nucleation process. And let's say it's a uh, it's E bar. And uh, so if I plot this, then it shows like this. It is for the neutron signal, and this is what the background means for the electronic noise. So it gives some separation your, between your background and the neutron signal. Now, if, if, if there are many types of backgrounds, so you have to construct several parameters here. I showed you two here, two parameters. And another parameter you can construct, if we do a first Fourier transform of the signal, then we get the frequency domain. And in a frequency domain, if I see an actual signal, bubble signal, and a noise, then there I see some discrepancy in this region, some similarities in this region. And from this the ratio of, between these two regions, I can construct another variable that is called F bar. So if we plot this, then it, it, it is possible that there will be several regions that one of the region, there will be electronic, mainly electronic noise. This region is acoustic blast, or have, such as mind blast or something, very big noise. This is fracture. This fracture means it fracture may occur in the detector material from this. And this region is basically the particle in this region. So you know, we extract this region if an event comes there. And each of the event, event by event, if we look all the events, compare it with the calibration signals, and what, if, it, if it is matches with your background signals, then you will find that is coming from where. But if, if you left with something, then you do, you, you, you have to analyze rigorously that. You have used the correlation between the signals. Also, the uh, or if you use some models, like most of the people use the uh, dark matter halo model, and that uh, you have to apply, and then you. Is there a difference between the background run and the calibration run? The black okay, the background run means there is no uh, shorts, uh, no known radioactive shorts present. So uh, there is that is basically the we, you are you are allow you are, you are you put the detector and whatever is coming is coming. It's everything is coming there. So calibration, calibration means no. yes, you you know that what shorts you are putting there, a strong shorts you are putting so that you can ignore the background contribution. So what is the shorts? 
for uh, neutron it is ammunition beryllium mainly and for gamma rays it can be cesium cobalt ammunition also but sometimes it is in uh, this uh, some uh, say non energetic neutrons are also used in uh, in accelerators sometimes if you go accelerators use a proton and put on lithium target that produce several monoenergetic neutrons. That can be also used. Now, uh, what is the advantage of uh, using this superheated liquid technique? Uh, basically, I've seen that uh, it can be made sensitive to high energy density of recoil nuclei, at, uh, but it can be made insensitive to low ionization like uh, gamma radiations at uh, by uh, controlling over the operating temperature and enjoy the threshold. Its operation is the ambient temperature, thus you can avoid the need of cryogenics. It's a big setup for cryogenics and also is the needs the each one. Possible to, uh, it is possible to fabricate a large mass detector. It's less expensive, the material. And another point is we use mainly uh, for uh, these, those experiments, fluorine is an active material and fluorine shows some high probability to interact with, uh, with flames. So there are mainly, if we, uh, two types of interactions that can be categorized, uh, the wind uh, interactions with matter that cross sections you can express like this. So it can be spin dependent, it can be spin independent. For a spin independent case, this cross section, it basically is proportional to the mass of the target. So if you take a large mass, means material mass, the atomic number is a mass, a large, then you will get a uh, cross section is large. But uh, for the spin dependent case, it basically depends on the J, these values. So here some of the, for some of the isotopes, these values are written. And we found that uh, fluorine is somewhere here, I think here, okay, it, it shows uh, this is the value. So these are, uh, this is also one of the reasons that people like uh, fluorine as a detector material. Yeah. By aiming, you mean the, the matter aims to the Yes, yes. yes. M chi is the, uh, yeah, it is the mass of the beam. Okay, so this is basically it is a wind. So wind neutral in it is in more uh, you can say wide sense. I have written we have written this. Yes. So uh, we uh, most stable uh, as, uh, configuration of the this is neutral you know, from that comes from supersymmetry and dark matter uh, usually from a long time it was thought that it is a supersymmetry particle. Yes. <laughs> yes. So pardon me. Okay. Now here is the two the wall leading results uh, that came uh, for spin dependent and another is for spin independent. So you know that for a spin independent, this is the LZ experiment that is the wall leader, and they gave a very strong limit of, at, uh, at at energy of thirty GeV C square. That's a uh, the cross section ten minus forty eight six into ten minus forty eight centimeter square. And uh, for spin dependent, it is Pico uh, that uh, that gave uh, limit at 10 to the minus 41 centimeter square. This is also at 30 GeV square, this region. This is the upper limit. This is the upper limit. But this is spin dependent, spin dependent, start with the difference in the cross section, like seven orders of time. Cross section is, yes. So, mass uh, so mass is not this mass is it is fluorine. This yeah. is for fluorine and LZ it is xenon. But the dark matter, the, the wind oh, wave mass. The, the yes. Same for, both for the mass, yes, 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 yes. Mass is same different. in the cross section. Yes, that is. True. Um. So these are upper limits. Yes, that is true. Mm. There is more interaction. Spoon, if there is spin, there is more interaction. That is that is coming. And the, then the factor, 
it is mainly the a a is the it depends main, mainly on a and nothing else and the other term is contributing much here yeah, so the like coupling and no no c a is only a square yes. So in this region, this is 30 GV, this region, uh, that is high mass, it's a high mass region. So the when experiment was started, it was very, it was very few experiments, and then gradually their experiments number has been increased and they it becomes much, much uh, sensitive experiments. And now it is approaching towards very ultra sensitive experiments. You can see one event per hundred ton per year, like this type of sensitive experiments. So, uh, and technology that needs to be very high technology uh, that should be needed for the few tons of uh, detector and very ultra sensitive uh, um, uh, the DAQ system, everything. So, uh, this region has been mostly, I have spoken that about the, this 30 GV region, 20 GV region. Now, below 20 GV, if, if we see this region, basically, here there are very less competition, very less experiments are there. Most of the experiments they have become reaching this region. So uh, we are now interested in this region, less than 20 GV region. But still, there are some experiments that have already started. This is not the all, there are more experiments that crest, crest, crest super CDMS, news G, CDX, dark site, also sensei, and um, and few more experiments are there. So uh, they have also uh, explored the low mass region like this, and they put this uh, this type of uh, constraint, uh, this type of cross section. So it is not that much of sensitive right now, uh, uh, like uh, like LCE or like that. So we are also proposing, we have proposed our experiment to explore in this region, less than 20 GB, 20 GB region. And uh, with this type of separated droplet detector, uh, active liquid is this one, C2H2A4. Chosen this because their hydrogen is there that will give us low mass, sensitivity to low mass. And until this exposure is about 10 kg days. So uh, I started in 19 where we have started the exploratory run, then R&D calibration. And in this year, we are expected that we do done in several steps and also the next generation R&D. Now, uh, before I go to experiment, we have to see whether this target can detect the what kind of mass uh, that, that it can detect. We can, what we can calculate, we can calculate the maximum recoil energy that we can have from, uh, from, uh, from a beam of given mass, because I have to detect this, uh, this energy. And also, we can also detect the, we can also calculate the lowest wind mass that is possible from a given target for a given threshold also. And, uh, and from there, we can calculate the, what is the ex expected event rate of the detector, if I know a few things. Okay. So, uh, this shows you the event rate, that uh, event rate per kg per day for, here it is at uh, this temperature means, this temperature means, about 2 kV threshold and 100% efficiency. So if he, this is uh, these two are for carbon and fluorine. This temperature, this threshold, hydrogen is not sensitive. But hydrogen is sensitive for more. This is at uh, 55 degree. Their hydrogen is sensitive when the threshold is much low. This threshold is about 0.2 kV. So this is hydrogen for hydrogen. We can <coughs> even read and these are brothers. This is for other uh, or other. Uh, Efficiency, this of fifty percent efficiency. And this this shows the lowest wind mass uh, for uh, for carbon and fluorine. If we think carbon and fluorine, then the, this region, this mass region, for hydrogen, this is basically this this mass region. This can be explored, but hydrogen, of course, is very high temperature. This is for uh, two different efficiencies. Okay, now with this, uh, we come to uh, our uh, laboratory, the Jodhubarana Bond Science Laboratory. This is situated in Jharkhand, uh, in the, the Uranium Corporation of India Limited. Uh, there is a mine, uh, Jodhubara mine. And the mine is, uh, this is a 555 meter deep underground. This is very similar to 500 meter of LSBB. 
And if you go down and then there are a few, a few walks, a few steps, there will be the lab. And in future, there is a provision of going to 888 meter in, 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 in this way, in, in somewhere here, uh, that we will explore in future. This is the mine area, this is the space, mine space before the lab was, you know, when we started. And then it become like this. So here, this is the, this, there is the lab. So this this was inaugurated in twin, in, in twenty seventeen September, and this is a lab. But lab is it is a small laboratory, but still now right now we can we can do the initial experiments there. Now the first point is whether it is suitable for doing our experiments for a rare event because it is a mine. What is the radiation background there? So first thing that we did is the measurement of radiation background. And that actually all dark matter experiments, they do the radiation background measurements all the time. They're doing that uh, all the time they are making is advanced analysis. So first thing we, we collect the sample from the rock and analyze the uh, rock, rock sample. And this was uh, done by another DE unit in Hyderabad. And they analyzed this all this and these actually we use as the input for a different uh, simulation experiment uh, simulation for uh, different uh, for uh, determining different backgrounds so this is snow lab and uh, snow lab is an ultra clean facility so i put it as a, a here but not as a reference to this because uh, okay we cannot compare the, these two but and these are the rock analysis uh, data uh, of of, uh, of the Dugura mine and here it shows the radon data. So radon is another like, very interesting and very dangerous thing for the experiments because uh, if radon uh, gas is there, radon it also comes from radium and decay chain. Radon is there, it is a gas. And it, if it is there, if it goes inside the detector, it can detect decay there. And it, in the decay process, it, it produces many alpha and all those alphas that they can contaminate the detector and they can mimic the actual signal. So we have to be very careful about the radon. And this uh, level is this 1.53 picocuri uh, within the laboratory. But within the laboratory, the radon level is 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 much better because we use a well ventilation in the inside the, uh, in the and laboratory is small, so ventilation is good. This is the measurement of gamma and muons, cosmic muons backgrounds at the underground lab. And this, uh, the, the gamma background was measured with a cesium oil detector. And this shows that until 2.8 MeV, it is very similar to the surface. Only above this, this it, 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 it decreases a one order of magnitude. And for cosmic muons, it is a simulated data. And it shows uh, the measurement was done with plastic scintillators, and uh, it shows uh, four orders of magnitude that is lower at the underground. So, what is the source of those gamma These gamma rays are coming from the rocks, the rocks, uh, the uranium decay chain, thorium decay chain, those from there. And uh, another is the neutrons, and these neutrons backgrounds are basically coming from the mu and cosmic mu and reactions, cosmic muons induce neutrons. Also, the alpha decay chain, that alpha n reaction, so all those uh, cosmogenic neutrons and radiogenic neutrons, both. The cosmogenic, uh, the radiogenic cosmogenic neutron flux is very low, so this was simulated with, uh, this is basically simulated, difficult to measure. This is on the order of 10 to the minus 8. And uh, this is the spectrum of the cosmogenic neutron. And radiogenic neutron, that part was measured and also simulated of the order of 10 to minus 4. And this is the spectrum. And this measurement uh, was until 10 MeV. Uh, and uh, okay, and this uh, the spectrum that is simulated the spectrum. So uh, this is the global feed where other experiments lies in the neutron and muon uh, flux uh, chain. And here are some areas, the vessel and other. Yeah, snow lab is very, very far, I think. So uh, next is what are the Phoenix program and JVSL? So as I say, that radiation background measurement, this is a continuous process. So it is going on. It, it has done basic idea we know now, but more uh, rigorous radiation background measurements are going on. 
There are some nuclear physics experiments also that nuclear physics experiment they did, did one experiment already done. Uh, those experiments that have a uh, low cross section, the, the experiments and uh, moderate lifetime that they cannot see at the surface, they can do that at the underground with reduced background. And the last one is the dark matter search. So what is going on is neutron energy spectrum measurement. And neutron energy spectrum is very important for our dark matter search experiment also, because the neutron gives a very similar signal as a wave signal. So we have to know the neutron very well. And this was going on by two group, SINP group and another BRC, BCC group. They are measuring with uh, boner spheres, several boner spheres. And this is with liquid scintillator detector. And another measurement is the radon measurement. Uh, that is also going on by the BRC group, that is with the zinc sulfide detector, and another is uh, solid state nuclear track detector. Those, those they have fabricated by themselves, uh, the BRC group. This is at this moment is uh, hanging there at the underground, and uh, this measurement is going on. Now, with this uh, rough idea on the on the background and with the calculations, so we started our experiments. First is the fabrication of the separated liquid detector. I, I, the prototype I showed here, small scale. So first we need to make the gel matrix where we have to put the detector. And then we have to put the droplets. And then you have to degas the gel because uh, any gas pockets or impurities, it can mimic your dark matter. It, it can mimic the bubble nucleation. It can, it can uh, sorry, it can help to grow the bubble to the critical size. Now you have to transfer your active liquid, C2H2S4, transfer within the gel at low temperature. And then you have to reduce the pressure to the atmospheric pressure so that uh, the things become superheated. And then you transfer uh, this in a, in, a, in a glass container and then coupled with the sensor, here the sensor, and this you attach to the DQO system, an amplifier and DQO system. So first thing again is the calibration. So we deal with uh, Sylvia Amshur's first gamma. She where it becomes sensitive. It is becoming sensitive at 37 degrees centigrade. So before that, it is not sensitive to gamma. So when we're doing experiments at these temperatures, we don't need to think about gamma rays. But if we do this high temperature means low threshold, then we have to make a discrimination with gamma. So if there are some discrimination analysis with um, this is. This one in gamma, and this is a neutron. Neutron means nuclear recoils, and gamma, uh, gamma is electron recoils. So uh, these are some uh, parameter, number of peaks, fundamental frequency, and also duration of the signals. So all this, it shows some separation from the neutron and the gamma in the signals. So this is a test run with uh, this situated to a four detector that is fabricated. First, we did a test run at JSL. To see, first we have to transport the detector from SI Kolkata to Jodhpura. And this is a superheated state, so metastable state. So that is a very difficult to transport. So that was also another challenge. And uh, so there, so we took in a portable fridge and that we carry with us. And uh, then, uh, so you hear this, and then um, this is a DAQ. And this is a lab view where we do the, the signal. And it's a very small 100 ml detector. Uh, this is about 100 uh, gram hour of exposure. And these are all the signals that is here. It is from a J vessel, from emission beryllium calibration, from at the sign view background, or, or, or all different kinds of sensor, low frequency, high frequency. And what we see that, what I've seen that. Uh, there are a huge low frequency background noise in the in, in this in this room. And uh, also the background residue is just a factor of two from that of the surface lab. And almost all the data that we found that is in the intervention level. And next we have to see what is the expected count rate from the neutron background in the, in, in, in the, in the laboratory. So that has also been calculated and it shows that the expected count rate is like this. Per event, per gram, per second for the neutrons. So with this calculations in mind, we start the first run of the experiment with, uh, with the self-fabricated uh, one detector, 500 ml of the detector. 
and this was run for uh, from July to December, but effectively that was 48.8 days. This is the 2.46 kg days of exposure. And this is a threshold because we work at the room temperature. So 5.87 kV is a high threshold. And uh, so this is detector A, this is a sensor here. This is a FPGFS PAQ and this is lab view. This system actually, this was, uh, this detector fabricated at SINB lab and this was developed uh, by the VCC. And uh, so, so this is the coverage at, at uh, JVC and this is at, at our lab. So there is about the one order of magnitude difference uh, in the coverage. And this is all the data analysis uh, uh, and two parameter I, I already explained before, so I don't need to explain how this has been done. Um, okay. So uh, this is uh, the noise and these are uh, JVSL data and this is out from calibration. Mostly JVSL data is within the, in the calibration region of uh, neutrons. Now, this is the first result from JVSL run. And this is not complete data, uh, complete results, but this is the first time I am showing it publicly, this data, uh, this result. So whatever be the result, uh, the, the, because it is first time we have got from uh, JVSL. So uh, this is from spin dependent case for fluorine, and this is for spin independent for carbon and fluorine, both I have shown here. And this is the expected uh, signal uh, from uh, for hydrogen if we lower if we can lower the threshold in future. So these are the uh, threshold mass for for both in both cases, and this is the sensitivity level that has been obtained from with this two point four six kg ten to the minus thirty seven centimeter square for ST ten minus thirty four centimeter square for SI sensitivity at fifteen point six GV. Okay, now next we have also started uh, and so this result we after we do a little bit more analysis we will we'll publish we will we'll submit it to some journal we don't know whether it will publish or not and the run and uh, run two is now going on so we, this is with a little bit high, lower threshold 1.92 kb threshold and uh, this is a bigger size detector uh, that was not visible so uh, that was, I think, 83, 83 gram of detector. And uh, so this will be about 11.2 uh, kg days if we can run for four effective months. Means It means we have to run for six months like that, more than six months. And threshold minimum we must be 2.2 GB that can be explored. So here, yeah, this is the detector. And this time it is inside the temperature control system. So here it is. So this system, it is also a less vibration observer. So we, we obtain much less uh, noise this time. And so this is here, and uh, this is the data acquisition system, and this is the lab view. So here we found uh, a signal you can see here. Uh, okay, so uh, this is probably from uh, background neutrons. And this has started last month's test. So there's a timeline and milestone that uh, we, we are expecting uh, to follow. This was the uh, exploratory run, and this was the run that I, I just showed, the last run. And then uh, we this at this moment, this is going on. And then we expect that we can do this. We, we can in, increase the mass of the detector by this, and but the, keeping the threshold uh, fixed. So, uh, and then we'll convert to the hazard type, means we will use a bulk liquid that R&D is going on. And finally, we'll go to 55 degree, 0.2 AV threshold, where we can go to down to 300 MeV scale uh, values. This is a data type of detector. This is a little bit uh, different, just I'm showing you here uh, that uh, here it will be a four chamber. A bottom chamber, it is, it, 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 it is, um, it, it is a full of liquid, um, uh, target liquid not droplet, full bulk liquid, and these are of different temperatures. And this temperature is lower than the boiling point of this. So if a droplet forms, it, uh, if a bubble forms, it goes up, it condenses here, and then comes down. So it will be a continuous sensitive type of bubble chamber. 
So, uh, and these are the different parts that is going on at this moment. And this is the future projected sensitivity. So where we will go, this is the present sensitivity. And this is, this will be here, next one. And if we go down, then in the future, then we can explore like this, that about 10 to the minus 43, 44 sensitivity. So uh, I come to the summary now. The cosmic muons, gamma rays, neutron backgrounds at JVSL that, we, uh, that have been measured and simulated. Neutron energy spectrum and radon measurements that are going on. Uh, with a rough understanding of the background level, the first phase dark matter search experiment that we have, so that has been that, you know, that has carried out with in-house made spirality degree detector. And the sensitivity came like this here. The present run is expected for an exposure of 10 kg days at 1.92 kV threshold. And uh, the future run will be with better understanding of the backgrounds and with larger exposure that, that is going on. And I also take this uh, course, uh, this opportunity to invite you to participate in this, to these exciting experiments. We are uh, in a lack of both experimentalists and theoreticians. And as you know, there's a role of theoreticians also in, in unfolding the data and the spectrum. So, um, and uh, experimentalists really, there is very, very few. And the students also, we get very close, few students that who really want to do hands-on experiments. They want to do the electronics and want to fabricate the detectors. So I acknowledge this, uh, my students here uh, mainly, and uh, also the collaborators and who are actively involved, some people in UCIL and uh, in PRC. And thank you all for your time. Question. Yes. So uh, the cleanliness and the mind. So, for example, uh, we saw that this is, uh, we saw that the uh, laboratory is in 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 Charkhan, somewhere in Charkhan. Now, what are what are the you know criteria for you know, if you want to make such a laboratory somewhere in India, let's say, what would be the the first criteria is you have to you have to get a space in the yes. underground <laughs> that is the yeah. so uh, for ucil the base main main reason was this is a DE institution and another point is they are going to dismantle that space they have already completed their mining process there their space so that is already they are not doing anything that space so we have, we have the, when we approach there, they are very ready to use, give their space. So and that then, is. Then the next, the main question is that uh, from a scientific, how, yeah, how long did it take and how was that designed? Like who designed the thing, the lab, the entire thing? Who all were involved in designing the lab and how was it done? Okay, there, there are several people who are involved. Um, it, this was the brainchild, you can say, of uh, Professor Vijushmani Motocharji, yes, if you have heard of him. He was our speaker like a few months back here. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, also um, the laboratory, the uh, this infrastructure there, uh, Professor Shuntujit Shaha was another uh, person who did a lot. And they are the two male milestones, you can say. Yes, but then how, how was it built? Like, uh, who build this? Yes, yes. Yeah, this is, uh, who build? They are. This is our uh, civil engineering section, civil department, and the UCIL uh, civil engineers. They have done make this. Yes, yes. By UCIL and yes. 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 yes, yes. Yeah. They can always. You can always go down because miners are already always going there. So, uh, but but th that time there was nothing. So they put dynamite and they uh, destroy that place. They make this. That, you see, IL people those things done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and after I that the infrastructure. But they are exactly that make particular channel where. They no, they are they are doing this regularly. They do. They're testing. It was not the, mine, the mining, 
mining people they are doing this uh, all the time i mean one of the points about JFC, this laboratory is it took at this level it took only 20 lakh rupees bill is that it is probably not right that sounds too little but yeah the laboratory is not very expensive it it actually took I think uh, two years like that two years yeah and so the uranium mining at the nine hundred meter level is still going on eight eighty meter eight eighty meter that is still going on yes so but the but the mining that line you have seen the line that line is far from the laboratory space. Right. It has a, It is not everywhere. There is a line where uranium is there. I mean, all of you heard of KGF for, for different reasons. Uh, the polar gold field. So there was a neutrino observatory there. Uh, Nagoda, etc. They worked there. That was where they started to think about building the INO. So they, when INO was uh, planning that time, it was also thought that maybe in future, when we'll be larger scale, this will go to INO cavern. So its name was that time was Dino House, that oh. matter at INO. But, uh, but eventually it, it did not <laughs> happen. That matter at <laughs> Okay, other questions? About the of the now the of the 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 in, in, in phases, the both things will do. And uh, now we are using the droplets in the form of droplets. So droplets, it, and, and next we will go to bulk liquid. So that way the size will increase. And just one of the studies, we started with water cool thing. Here the water was the active liquid or cooling edge was the active liquid. The water is a water is a shielding material. The, the yeah. What is it? It is a water is a good shielding for neutron. So water is huge. It's shielding. You just seen thirty centimeter, sixty centimeter thick new uh, water. Other questions? Uh, first of all, thank you for the beautiful talk. But I actually have one basic question regarding the very initial part of your talk, where you showed that the detections are done via the bubble, their particles are interacting, and the bubbles are getting created. So uh, different. Particles are interacting in the data part that you showed. So, how do you differentiate between which one is um, from the bubble scenario? Yeah, so uh, that that you can do by the pulse analysis. So, what you are getting the signal, the acoustic signal that you are getting, that that you can convert to electrical signal, the the pulse. So that from the pulse, if you analyze the pulse, the energy deposition is different for different particles. So that was the one, you can construct some parameter that is proportional to the energy deposition. That is also the kind of frequency that you are, it is emitting during the phase transition. That is also different for different particles. So once you char characterize your detector with different known particles, then you know that what type of uh, signal you have for neutron and for gamma, what kind of signals you have here before the run. Before the run yes. So that was the calibration. That is called the calibration that you do it. Yeah. So you do it with all known shoots and then you will eliminate those. Okay. Thank you for the very nice talk. I have a very nice question. So when you characterize the background, how do you know that there is no program next year signal or it's not important because it's a week? So uh, that is true that when you are doing with the backgrounds, it, it, it is there that there may be a wimp. You know? It's possible. So uh, you cannot see you cannot see. So what we do it when we uh, characterize with some known shorts. So we first take background, then we put the shorts, then again we take the background. So we subtract the background from the shorts contribution. 
but but you cannot shield against foreground. So but... we we cannot shield beams, but to shield beams you have to first detect and then you have to know why, okay how it it interacts, then you can shield. Thank you. Other questions? So, as the results, uh, can we uh, just, yeah, yeah, so, um, the, yeah, I, I was wondering that, uh, oh, these are all projected. Which yeah, these are projected. Do it first it run, yes, yes, first run. So, uh, yeah, what, what is the error, like, when, I mean, I don't uh, Okay, so it. error, I have not, I have not put here, but I showed the error here, here, in, in the box. And there you can see the statistical and systematic error. Uh, it is there. And so then you are that part to... that part is uh, still there. The total error analysis part. Then let's go to the, the record. Let's go to the yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one. That's your experimental curve, and that is from the sequence. The sequence data you got that. No, forty-eight. This is from forty-eight point eight days. Forty-eight point eight days. Okay. And this projected one that we see, is it just by uh, increasing your observing time or is there something else? This is, no, this is exposure. This is for 10 kg days one. And uh, for first one is in, we increase the exposure. The exposure yeah. And also the time and volume. Of and, the volume of the reactor. And also the threshold. By so lowering that threshold. So I think we have to again build a new detector. Yes, it's always uh, we have to build a new detectors. So, so then, then maybe a very odd question to ask that what is the timeline that we can reproduce that goes like 10 to the minus 44, yes, yes. 43, which are mm. uh, sort of the constraints that we got from. And, uh, no, for LZ is different. LZ, LZ, LZ different. is uh, energy range is different. different. LZ, LZ energy range is different, but at this the energy sensitivity can go. I mean, you can constrain up to then the other super pack is a P curve, the or the Pato curve. That's sort of like what kind of timeline we can reach that sensitivity. So this is for thousand kg days. Yeah, so here I, I put a timeline. Uh, it, it may be optimistic one, but uh, still now it, it is going on. Next couple of years. Next couple of years, you can say. Other questions? Yes. Uh... So at this energy, at this energy range, low energy range, if it is 10 to the power 33, 34 is also yes, acceptable. Yes. This energy range. Uh, That's why we don't want to compete with LG or other already established experiments. If we start now, we cannot compete with it. Yes. So, uh, you have shown that the part of different experimental setup, you have yeah. chose the different uh, chemical, chemical, right, for the detection. Uh, how, we, how you choose those elements? Uh, 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 the mm -hmm. material, how, material, what are the pro basic properties of that material? Yeah, so this is also again a good question. That, that we have to spend a long time on this before you start any experiment. First thing is what what kind of material you will choose. That that depends on which mass of wind you are interested to get. So depending on as I am interested to use the low mass. So I am I am looking for the target that contains some low atomic number, low mass number. So hydrogen is the lowest, most lowest. So that's why I have chosen C two H two F four. But why not only hydrogen? Because I I I am using the superheated liquid detector. I have to make the superheated state. So I have to choose such an element that I can make superheated at room temperature, at some moderate temperature. This liquid is is boiling point is minus twenty six. So minus 26, and I am working at, say, 25. If it is plus 25, then it is 50 degrees degree of superheat. So I can make it superheat at this temperature. So all, keeping all these things in mind, I have to choose the, the target. First is the physics important, and then, of course, we have to make it, how we, whether we can make it or not. But, uh, my second question is, what is details? What is details? 
Which means what the data you are getting. Uh, what it detects means uh, for for WIMP, if it, it if it comes, what it will happen? It will interact with the nucleus, and the nucleus will deposit the energy in the medium. We call nuclei. Yeah. So that 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 energy deposition you can detect in various forms. So here it is a liquid. So the, in the liquid, is, is energy is depositing. If energy deposition it satisfies the bubble formation condition, then the bubble form. So when this bubble is formed, then acoustic signal is released. So that acoustic signal, it 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 it, uh, it can we can detect it using different sensor, acoustic sensor, different frequency sensor. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? So the liquid xenon type detector at least for the larger mass films, like yes, yes, large, uh, larger, 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 larger mass. But that it seems that that has sort of saturated, or is there still trying? It's still trying because there are still there is a there is some space up to up to one or two orders of magnitude they can go down. In that graph where you just showed that mine glass thing, so is it exactly the blasting in the mines or is it something else? Yes, uh, it happens in the mine mining always. They how they do the mining? They and blast it. Blasting in the in the the yeah. term blasting in the mine. That is yes. Yeah. Because these are dynamite, they put inside and they blast it. Yeah. And so everything comes out. Then from there they take extract the uranium or some other things. So that may be happening in some uh, far space. But that sound, if it is in night or somewhere, it comes. It, your detect your sensor may. Recognize this. Okay. Any other question? Okay, I will. Okay, thank you ma'am for this nice talk. As far as I can understand, we are trying to detect the wind, but not directly when they are passing through the atmosphere, they are changing to another uh, particles like neutrinos or gamma rays and we are trying to detect them by the detectors. So how can I uh, uh, conclude that, okay, so these neutrinos, these gamma rays are coming from the wings, not from the other sources? So this is uh, from, uh, this is for the indirect search. Okay, uh, what you were talking about that, uh, what I, we are discussing is a direct detection here. We directly we will detect the yeah, actual, interaction. actual interaction, but in that case, that that neutrino that energy is different. Okay, this is a two third, one third or two third of wind mass. Normally, this neutrino uh, energy, so it's a very high energy neutrinos. So that will differ for the atmospheric neutrino. Yeah. That is in direct, but this is direct. No, no, it's not possible. And it is found, then there is a There are some claims by, by SI Warren experiments, three or four experiments. They have claimed that they have detected three or two, three signals. But that has that that again has been nullified by some other experiments. So if it is uh, if it is somebody has detected, then I think several experiments has to detect the same thing. Then there will be uh, it will be discovered. Other question? Okay. But um, I I really like to interact with this audience. I really like it. Your uh, the questions are very nice. Thank you. So before I end, I have uh, I would like to say something. Uh, so I always like some of my students have heard this before that uh, I always say that uh, dark matter is kind of like the neutrino of the 1940s, which means that it was theoretically predicted. Uh, it was very 